Hello and welcome to this very special edition of Blockbuster Movie Minute. This is the very first half hour edition of our show and we're bringing on special guest Rob Sweet today. Welcome yes. Rob. Thank you. So that would make it Blockbuster Movie Half Hour. Yeah, it's a little longer than one minute. It's about 30 minutes. All right. So, you know, <laughs> our first two segments worked so well, Rob, that I figured we got to do a full version of we this. We got a crazy amount of uh, reactions. Yeah. I don't know how many people are like, I saw your movie thing and I'm like, first go, I don't know what you're talking about. And then I go, oh yeah, and yeah, yeah, that Blockbuster Movie thing. Yeah, all right. Well, so, Rob, I'm excited. Thanks yeah. for having me, buddy. <laughs> no problem. Well, uh, as you know, and most of the world knows, there's a big Star Wars movie coming out pretty soon, a couple it's weeks now. Huge. And, Rob, I know I get a lot of slack from you from this. Not a big Star Wars fan. I have hardly seen the movies, you know, well, a little, little bit here and there, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the floor to you. There's, you there's your here. problem right there. If you've hardly seen the movies, then how can you judge them? See, you being a comic book fan, you're into the sci-fi fantasy realm of things. How do you know you won't like it if you didn't sit down and actually, you know, digest all the movies, how they're meant to be, four, five, six, one, two, three, even if you went the other way around, because I know you're a big CG guy, and so you young guys, you're all like, oh, that movie's old, it's got bad graphics, so fine, go watch it, one, two, three, four, five, six, you'll like it either way, but Star Wars, what it brings is good characterization, uh, awesome, uh, awesome narrative arc. It, it, it's, it, it was a benchmark moment for sci-fi films and for fantasy films as well um, for including those awesome elements into this fantastical world. I mean, there's a reason it resonated with so much of American society. Uh, more than American society, the global society. Why? Because it is special. It is, it's all about, it's a human story, but it takes place in a galaxy far, far away, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. All right, Rob, you make very valid points. And I admit, I'd probably like it a lot better than a lot of other movie series, you know? Like, I see all these movies in school, you know, Citizen Kane, boring movies like that. I'd probably like Star Wars a lot better than that, I admit. I just really haven't gotten around to seeing, seeing them. I wouldn't like it as much as, like, Marvel Transformers. I already know that, but... It's not about what you like better. I mean, it's not about a yeah. measuring stick. It, it, people got to just look at things as, like, good or bad, you know? Like, I'm a fan of Star Wars. It's probably my number one. It doesn't mean I'm going to be any less excited to see... Uh, Avengers Infinity Wars Part 1 or Bat uh, Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. I mean, I, at this point, I feel like we're living in a world, I've said it before on your segments, where I, everything I dreamed of as a kid is coming to life on the cinematic screen. So how can you complain about that? I mean, my childhood is out there. I don't have to play with action figures anymore because they're there on the screen to, for me to see. Okay, I still play with action <laughs> figures. I'm not going to lie. Rob, you're right. Definitely got a lot of movies to look forward to, no matter what, what you're a fan of. There's tons of movies coming out. Movies basically every year for all these series. Why don't you explain like, how important this Episode 7 is? I'll tell you why it's important, because this takes place after the last of the original trilogy, and what everybody fell in love with was that original trilogy. So everybody fell in love with those characters, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Han Solo, Chewbacca, R2-D2, C-3PO, and now we get to finally, 30 years later, get the continuation of that story. And also, it's out of George Lucas's hands, and it's in the hands of somebody who was a fanboy, J.J. Abrams. And that's what it needs to get back to the magic that it was in the first place. All right, definitely a lot, big day coming up. A lot to look forward to if you like Star Wars. Two but, weeks uh, from today uh, that we're taping this. Two yeah. weeks from today. I don't know when it's going to air, but two weeks. Two weeks from today, all right. I can't wait. I don't even care about finals. All right, uh, a couple months after Star Wars, another big movie people have been looking forward to for decades. Batman vs. Superman. As, as I said, look at, I mean, I'm you already a, mentioned it. I'm a huge fan. And what happened yesterday, of our, the day before they were taping this, the trailer, a new trailer came out. Uh, unbelievable. That was, yeah, that was perfect timing. I mean, I was, I was on my computer at 2 o'clock, 2 a.m. I saw it on Facebook. Somebody shared it. I was like, Batman Superman, new trailer come out perfect. I'm talking about this with Rob tomorrow. Like, it was perfect. I know. I was ready to go to bed, too. And I was like, oh, man. And I didn't even think you were going to see it. I thought you were going to just probably be like, oh, I don't care because it's DC. Because let's face it, guys, I mean, this is the host of Blockbuster uh, Movie Minute, but, uh, he, you know, he's got a very segmented taste. and uh, As you can tell. I mean, the thing is, you got to be kind of open. And you got to realize the fact that if you're a Marvel fan, you're probably going to be a DC fan, too. I mean, you might like one more over the other, but who created a lot of these tropes that are in all these comic book uh, stories? DC. It all started with Superman. It all started with Batman. And the magical thing about Batman is there's a guy that has no superpowers. He's as human as you can get, as flawed as you can get. And he's got deep, dark secrets, and sometimes he goes to the point of uh, the edge of the brink of insanity. And those are the kind of things that why people relate with him. So how can you, how can you deny? How can you not think Batman's cool? All right, I can understand Superman. I mean, I yeah, he's the Boy Scout, but I love Superman. I think he he's the 
he embodies what a superhero is supposed to be, and he's a symbol of good. All right, Rob. Well, I'm a lot more lenient with DC than I am with Star Wars. Like, I'm actually n- know a pretty good amount of DC stuff. Being a Marvel fan, you kind of, like you said, you kind of have to know both of them, sort of. Yes. Um, well, uh, yeah. I've, I've seen the Batmans, most of them, the, the newer ones at least. I went to see Man of Steel, because I, I like the trailer. I'm a big action movie guy, and that actually had me sold in the trailer. That's why I went inside to see Man of Steel. It was, that 20, was a good movie, 2013, I yeah, I thought it was great. But um, It had the scope of, like, the Avengers. Those Avengers films that have this, like, it's, it's a big city-wide battle, and there's, like, you know, thousands of deaths and destruction, and just this, like... It has that epic scale Man of Steel had, and I think this next movie is going to equal that, if not increase the scale. Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely going to go see Batman vs Superman. I mean, I'm not excited for like Marvel movies and everything, like I said before, but I'm definitely you know looking forward to Batman vs Superman. Why don't you talk about the rest of the DC though? Like they're coming in, kind of they're trying to imitate Marvel, basically bringing in new spinoffs, new yeah. uh, uh, characters and everything. So. But they're kind of taking a different approach, where like every movie is where like. In Marvel, you have your f- different franchises, and they do tie together, but you can look at them separately. Like, you can look at Ant-Man separately as just a film within itself. Um, every, every DC movie is a direct sequel to the one that's coming before. So, this Batman vs. Superman is a direct sequel to Man of Steel, which is going to lead right into Justice League. So, it's like, they all interconnect like a puzzle piece directly, rather than being this you know, smaller portion of a bigger universe. I mean, it is, you know, part of a bigger universe, but it's it's bigger pieces to the puzzle. Well, the one thing I'm looking forward to is, I think they need to make a static movie. You ever seen Static Shock, the cartoon, yeah. when we were younger? Yeah, that, that was... He's like my favorite DC character. They need to have him in a movie, then it'd be really sold on DC. Well, you gotta think that maybe down the line they will, you know what I mean? They, they start getting through the, you know, bigger characters, you know, so maybe yeah. after tw- 2020 we gotta get to that. Yeah, all right. Well, very good start to the show, Rob, I think. Two great segments down. We'll be right back after a crucial break. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. You up? What'd you dream about? Me? JK. Text me back. I'll keep texting till you wake up. Are your parents home later? Is this something I did? Exclamation point. We're in a huge fight right This now. isn't a joke. Hello? Text me. Welcome back to Blockbuster Movie Minute. For this second segment, we're going to bring on a special guest, my good friend, my twin, Justin Proietti. Welcome, Justin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Excited to be on the show? Oh, absolutely. With, yeah. with, your, with your real family member, Rob, and yep. your... Long lost cousin. Yep, we're cousins. Separated at birth. John DeMiro here, your t- other twin. Yep, we're, we're all we're we're one all big happy family. One big one Italian family. reunion right here. It's a family reunion. Yep. It's a lot of Italian sausage. It is. <laughs> no, that's for sure. Well, uh, so, Rob, you know all about this. With the Marvel movies now, there's basically two separate universes. you got the real Marvel universe, Avengers and everything. Then you got the Fox side, who has still has X-Men and Fantastic Forest properties. Along with X-Men, they have Deadpool, who was a mutant, so they have rights to him as well. There's a big movie coming out for Deadpool, February 12th this year. What are your thoughts on that? Ryan Reynolds. Uh, my thoughts on it is cool, because Ryan Reynolds, he played the character in X-Men Origins Wolverine. Um, he didn't play him in the Deadpool uh, at the end, as Deadpool in the end, because he realized that it wasn't going to be the Deadpool that he thought he was getting into, you know, the Merc with the mouth. But... Uh, he still was heavily involved in the pre-production to try to get this movie off the ground, and then even when it was in developmental hell, he, you know, pushed for it. And then an online uh, viral video of of test shots that he did actually made this movie come to fruition, which is uh, really cool that he still stayed involved. And now it, we finally get to see a Deadpool that's like really true to the character in the comics, and uh, you know, breaking the fourth wall. He's just you know, smart Alec. Um, and it's going to be very violent, and it's going to be rated R, a hard R rating. So um, that's the only way you can do it, uh, in my opinion. Not, you know, you can go PG-13 with Deadpool. Yeah, this is a very, very rare rated R movie. I think Blade was probably the only other rated R Marvel movie. Punisher but, Warzone. Punisher, yeah, you're right, Punisher as well. Mm-hmm. But um, it looks completely different from all the other Marvel movies, you can tell. Like, like comedy, like you said. Deadpool is such a different character. He breaks fourth wall left and right. Comedy, like you said. Definitely a lot to look forward to. But uh, another X Men movie this year coming out, the big the big Kahuna, X Men Apocalypse. What do you think about that? I think everybody's been waiting for Apocalypse as a villain. I think as soon as it got announced, everybody was like, "Well, as soon as everybody saw that scene at the end of uh, Days of Future Past, at the end of the credits, where it's like, oh my God, they are going to Apocalypse." Um, a lot of people are a little upset how Oscar Isaac looks in some of the shots that have leaked. They said he looks like Ivan Ooze from the Power Rangers movie. Um, from what I hear, you, you really got to see the final scene of that to really get the power of uh, Apocalypse. It's going to be like the whole X-Men team versus him. It's supposed to be a really good action sequence. Um, I'm giving it a chance. Uh, I, he's a good actor. I, 
I'm looking forward to it. I don't care if he looks... They wanted to avoid him looking like Thanos. They, they don't want this whole big CGI, like, blocky guy. So instead they made him more human-esque. I mean, there's still those elements of Apocalypse in there, so... I don't know. I'm all for it. I think it's going to be awesome, and apparently Hugh Jackman may have done some reshoots, so... You can't do an X-Men movie without Hugh Jackman. And he might be in the Deadpool one I hear as well. Yeah. Uh, like you said, Apocalypse, he's probably the most long-awaited Marvel uh, villain that hasn't been in any movies yet. So that's definitely something to look forward to. And also for X-Men, next year, the Wolverine uh, new sequel coming out. Hugh Jackman's last appearance of Wolverine. What do you think about that? Um, see, now, it makes me think, are they close to a deal with Marvel? Are they going to merge the universes or reboot them or whatever? Because... You can't do Wolverine and not have Hugh Jackman be it. I mean, he's just almost 20 years of playing the character. You, nobody else could do it. Like, I just don't see it. And even if somebody did good, it's, it just wouldn't be Hugh Jackman. So, I don't know. In my eyes, like, I'll definitely see the movie. I hope, it's, I hope they do... A, they're supposed to do the Old Man Logan storyline, from what I hear. That might, that might happen, so... That'll be interesting to see if they do that. And uh, Professor X will be back, Patrick Stewart. So a little tie-ins to you know, the whole rest of the series. Uh, I'm all for it, man. I, X-Men is the one property outside of Marvel that has done a good job. Because so, we know Fantastic Four, Fox dropped the ball on them. We've talked about that oh, before. Yeah. yeah, I was just going to get to that. Uh, well, also, for X-Men, like you said, you have some of the same thoughts that I had. You can't do anything Wolverine without you at this point. They don't have anything scheduled after that for, for uh, any anything X-Men, any mutants or anything. So, I mean, what are they going to do? Reboot X-Men? You can't do that again. They tried that with Fantastic Four. People want to see X-Men against Avengers. It's, just go it's, for it. Like, do it. I mean, they know yeah, the money that's going to be left on the table if they don't, if they don't you know, merge it, go together. I mean, Spider-Man's proven right now the buzz that can happen if they, they sign the dotted line on this. So, uh, you're, uh, you're, Avengers vs. X-Men, you're talking over a billion dollars right there. So Yeah. Yeah, um, like you said, Fantastic Four definitely at one point is going to be with Marvel. Uh, X Men, hopefully, we'll get there someday. But we got to move on to the next segment. My favorite thing to talk about, probably at all, Transformers. This is this is the the series for me. I mean, Avengers obviously is up there, number one, probably. It's my life as well. Sure, yeah, Justin, yeah. that's why I brought you on. I wanted you to come on for the Transformers segment. I had to had to have you do it. Like, I was I was thinking about this yesterday. The eight most influential movies in my life, four of them are Transformers movies. I know everybody everybody has their opinions. I'm going to say it all right now. You're all, all wrong. All four Transformers. Four, the, all of them, they came out at specific times in my life. They were big influences, whatever. Mm. And they each did different things. Like, everybody, like, I feel bad for everybody else. They don't get the experience it the same way I do. Like, I feel sorry for everybody else. Like, That's they, I, they clearly don't know what they're looking for. Like, it's how I feel with Star Wars and you, but, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, okay, you got me there. But, um, like, the, people argue that there's too much action. There's too much this. There's too much this. What do you expect? Giant alien robots coming in. Well, I think it's they're going to be explosions. They're going to be action. They're not going to sit down and have a tea party. It's and Michael the Bay. Difference. Michael Bay comes in. They didn't. They didn't hire him to have a freaking Optimus against Megatron tea party. But well, I think they, it's he brought him in to, to, to beat each other's heads up, basically. Yeah, well, so as you can see, I'm very passionate about Transformers. So well, I am too. I'm big. Yeah, major. That's, again, that's why I brought you on. Oh my god, freaking! But, but I think it's because people are so used to you know the old versions of it. I mean, they did bring in the yeah. same. I don't remember his name, but the guy who plays Optimus is still Peter the actual, Cole. yeah, is yeah. still Optimus. Yeah. But um, like you said, people think that it's not, it's going to follow more towards the lines of the old, the 70s. Was it the 70s 80s. that they did? 80s. 80s. It was 80s. Sorry, um, sorry, yeah. Following lines of those. I mean, they kind of are with Galvatron and the creator or whatever, but I mean, I feel like they want it to be so, you know, along the lines of that. But, I mean, come on, you can't. You, with all the new technology and stuff like that. Well, they, they brought some 90s elements in there, too. With that last movie, Age of Extinction, they brought in the Dinobots, which were from uh, the, the Beast Wars uh, line of... Uh, it was a cartoon, almost a CGI cartoon in the 90s. So uh, they're trying to, you know, build the universe big, bigger. Uh, there's, what, signed on with for eight, room, yeah. uh, eight movies total. So yeah. four more movies. There's a writer's room a lot of a lot of... Uh, a lot of major writers in Hollywood that got together to uh, sculpt how the story will go. Apparently, one of the future movies should be going to uh, Cybertron. Yeah, Frequent yeah. Cybertron one. Because I, one. I figured it out because, I mean, the first film, well, yeah, we've already had, like, four movies. Yeah. One in America, one in, I think, you know, Egypt, Egypt uh, then China. Yeah, so now, yeah. where are you going to go? I mean, Arctic. 
<laughs> but like, I mean, they got to be starting bringing it to Cybertron, like you said. Yeah. I mean, so I'm excited to see what they are going to. You know. I like the movies. I, you know what? I, I thought Age of Extinction. I thought it was the best one since the first yeah. one. Now I, the complaints people have is that that the the plots kind of do drag. Like, yeah, it's a lot of yeah. action, but it's almost like ex- over excessive and a reliance on it. Where like, you know, it's like, all right, your heroes are in peril, and then they come back, but then they're back in peril again, and then they come back, and then they're back in peril again, and it's like, yeah. okay, did the movie have to be three hours long? For me, I'm an action guy. Like, I'm just like you. I'm a huge action movie yep. buff. Like, I study action movies going back to, like, 1938, Adventures of Robin Hood. You know, like, early James Bond movies, things like that. So, yeah, you give me action, I'm satisfied. But I see what the complaints are. I, uh, yeah. I do. And But Mark Wahlberg's a good addition. Uh, I think he totally beats out Shia LaBeouf. So, yeah. um, he's one of my favorite stars, period. So, oh, yeah. Uh, the, yeah the, absolutely. The franchise has huge potential. For sure. Yeah, Rob, you keep mentioning Age of Extinction. That's one. That's my favorite one. I'm gonna bring it up. You, I was gonna bring it up. I feel. I feel like they combined the first three. The, the, what was good about the first one? It was you know, origin basically. The first one, obviously. Second one had the best fights by far. Age of Extinction was pretty close. And the third one, the best thing that that brought was Chicago. The whole 40 minute final battle. That was kind of like the uh, the China battle in uh, Age of Extinction. Right. Yeah. That was the best one. So like they they combined the best elements. People complain about the first three. Too much shy. Too much humans. There are too many humans. Which I agree too with. Too much stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah, okay. That, those because are pretty good co- complaints or whatever. They fixed all those in the fourth one. There's no Shia. They did they because... They a lot more Autobot focused, and then they still complain. You can't win. You can't complain right. you can't with win. that because what they showed in the Age of Extinction now is that we see a different side of Optimus having more feelings of anger and stuff. Yeah, the Optimus is this And brings in more of the... Yeah, the... He brought the her on. Brought in more human and elements like to the Transformers, and which is like... Yeah, exactly what you want. That's what you're looking for. I right love now. that about that. My it's favorite having, scene probably in Age of Extinction, Ratchet's death scene. Like the first three, they had Iron yeah. Man die. He was kind of just whatever. Right. Jazz died. Oh no, I, I cried. No, I didn't. No, no, I, I mean, I mean the way that it was done though. Cried, like Iron Hyde, was Iron Hyde was second favorite Autobot, but like the way the way he died was just kind of weak. But You're Ratchet right. It was in, quick. It was Lockdown snappy. Comes in, they had they yeah. had a KSI Cemetery Wind was was killing him. That was that was the best scene pretty much in the movie, I think. Yeah. It if was, you yeah, can yeah. feel a robot dying. Yeah, it can be emotionally heart wrenching. They did something. They touched a nerve because I remember yeah. that yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah. And like, I don't know who every Transformer is. Uh, sometimes it's hard to keep track of these movies because some of them look similar. Yeah. When that happened, man, I felt it. So I mean, they yeah. did something right, man. And the thing about I like about the series, like, it's this series are really is a reflection of me. It's completely misunderstood. And most people don't understand me. All right. But they dominate the competition. Have you seen the box office numbers? You wonder. Oh why, yeah. You wonder why there's four movies, people. Glo- money. This right here. Globally. This right here. That's Globally why. Globally too. Yeah. Global. Global money. Globally too. Yeah. 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 It's just, and that's why they brought in the writers' room. They're they're making basically a movie year uh, starting in 2017. They they're doing it for the money. People want to see it. Most people, the people who complain are the loudest ones, obviously. But most people, they enjoy it. They they go see it. They want to pay money. They they here. I go to the movies. I want to I want to use this. I want to use this and, and pay for Transformers movies. That's why I go see it. I pre-order them. That's the why tickets. So yeah, yeah. Pre-order. It's always I've comes out around my so, birthday, so yeah. I do that every so, year. When I mean, it comes out. The way, yeah, if you're a Transformers fan like us, nobody cares what we have to say. That is another thing. I don't care what other people say. This this series doesn't care what other people say. The critics, whatever. So, it is hard, especially hard. since they're so like Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, he's a great actor, but like then they took him out, and everyone's like, well, he's a much better actor since he's been in those movies. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, just like you said, the box office receipts are there, which means that. You're not the only one that feels that way, you yeah. know. I didn't see Age of Extin- Extinction in the theater, but when I saw it, like I think I saw it on Netflix, yeah. I was like, what? "Why didn't I go see this in the theater?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, one more question. Lots to look forward to for Transformers. What about favorite characters that haven't been in the movies yet? I know. If, I'll talk about mine. What do you guys? Do you guys have any characters from the cartoon or anything? Hmm. Well, Sonic yeah. the Hedgehog. No, well, he's saying not to be really weird, but right? Transformers character that hasn't been in the four movies. Oh, yet. Sonic the Hedgehog would be pretty cool. Um, wasn't it? If they made him like, anyway. Like you're talking I about Transformers. Said, uh, yeah, Transformers characters, obviously. I'm not you know what? Special. I don't know his name, but he was very popular back in the day as a toy. The one that was a cassette. He, he, no, a sound wave. He's been in there. Oh, he has? Yeah. Oh, yes, he has. Yeah. yeah. He, he oh, well, no, he was two things. Well, then he needs to be a cassette. Soundwave well, was I mean, the If they satellite. do the prequel. The is this big, right? If they do the prequel, he needs to be the cassette. Yeah, he could have been. Yeah, well, he got killed in the third one. But prequel, he's gone. But prequel, we go back in time. He needs to be the cassette. That's true. Yep. All right. Oh, Ultra Magnus, though. Optimus Second Command. You guys know Ultra Magnus? I don't. Oh. See, that's the thing. He, I don't know all the characters. Like, well, I, I, don't, I haven't really yeah, seen like the age cartoon stuff, but I still. You got an Ultra Magnus, though. Micro, microbots. Microbots. That's what they need to bring in. 
microbots, the little tiny transformers. I know what they need. Yes. I know what I really want them to do. It's kind of more character, but not really. But where they all combine into the Ultimate Optimus. Oh, Don't you yeah. agree? Wait, oh my God! Like that would be amazing. Like if because it kind of like shows Jetfire, right? In the second one, sort of. Yeah, yeah sort of, just yeah. like that. But like you know how one. One Autobot is the leg and the legs, and then there's yeah, two yeah. the arms, and an ultimate Optimus. Yeah. A lot of appendages. That would make me so happy, and like if he just like like totally destroyed everything. Everything. I, I would be satisfied. Like at least in the last movie, right. they have to do that. All right, guys, my last point. This is the perfect time to bring an Ultra Magnus because Optimus, like, like you talked about before, just he left Earth. They gotta bring an, an Ultra Magnus to kind of lead the Autobots when Optimus isn't there. So this is the perfect time to bring him in. Mm, and see. he's kind of like a strict kind of guy. As you can see, the Hound and everybody in Age of Extinction, they, they just kind of ran over the place and did whatever they want, kind of like little kids. Yep, yep. Ultra Magnus would come in, he, he'd run like a military camp. You got, I want to see that. That's what I'm looking forward to. That would be really cool. All right, All guys. Right. Very good segment. Uh, Justin, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Always, always welcome to talk about Transformers or whatever. Oh, yeah. So uh, we got to go to commercial, so uh, we'll see you guys around the, after the commercial's done. Preparing today reduces the consequences of a disaster tomorrow. Welcome back to the final segment of this special edition of Blockbuster Movie Minute with Ralph Sweet. Half hour. Yeah, Blockbuster Movie Half Hour. You're right. Let's get technical. Come on. You got all, all right. technical about Transformers. Let's get technical about everything. Come on. All right, Rob. We got to start off. This is the Marvel segment. We got to start off with the Captain America trailer. Yeah, yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. You got your first glimpse of Black Panther. I was going to mention that too, Black Panther. You got some uh, battle scenes. It looks like uh, we might have a, a little foreshadowing of casualties in the oh, war. Yeah. Uh, we see uh, War Machine incapacitated and down. Yeah. Uh, you know how the comic goes, right? What was War Machine? No, in or general. I, your I boy. Bit, yeah. Cap gets capped. Yeah. I if you know yeah. what I'm saying. But. Again, I've said it before, movies, they're completely different. You can't really go by that. I think Cap, always I think Cap is going to be in Infinity Wars. So I don't think Cap's going to die in this one. That doesn't mean he's not going to die. What happens in comic books? Well, you mean because they die, Bucky they come and, back. Yeah. I think well, the first not, guy to prove thing. it was this guy right here, Soups. He was killed by Doomsday, and then he came back. Yeah, that's... And then it became a trend after that. Nobody ever truly dies. That's why in these movies it's pointless to kill somebody off. He's only so signed on for one more movie after Civil War, by the way. There's two Avengers Infinity Wars. Well, I think they're counted as one, though. No, no, they're not. You sure? They're separate films. They are separate the films, contracts. but I In think... the contracts, they're separate films. Now, that begs the question, does he die in this one? He remains out of the first Infinity Wars and then comes back for the second when they combine all the Avengers teams? Think about Lots that for a second, too. kid. But, yeah, like you said, the two biggest things I took away from the trailer, Black Panther, as we mentioned, he's getting his own movie coming in. He, he looks freaking amazing in the movie, in the trailer. And then also, William Hurt is back. General Ross, Thunderbolt Ross from Incredible Hulk. Sure. He, That's cool, yeah. but like, I'm like, okay. Con connecting more of the Spider-Man's going to be in there somewhere. I'm, trust me, I'm getting to Spider-Man. We'll get to that. That's why I brought the shirt in here. So let's get to it. Let's talk it. Well, Spider-Man's going to be in gonna, it. Tom I have Holland. a schedule here, Rob. We've got to stick to the schedule. Okay, cool. <laughs> so move on with the schedule. All right. We've got the rest of the Phase 3. Two, uh, a couple years ago, they came out with a Phase 3 schedule. they got nine movies. Then, Spider-Man comes in, like you said, 10 movies. Now, Ant-Man and the Wasp comes in, 11 movies. Everything gets altered, three movies a year. That's tons of stuff to look forward to. On top of the other franchises, on top of Fox's franchises, on top of, yeah. uh, like, everything, like, DC. Hello, like, it's awesome. I mean, it's awesome. And, like, you see all these little side movies, Ant-Man, Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, they weren't big franchises, and now they're huge franchises, because they pay attention, they, they make good narrative films out of it it's not just you know oh there's oversaturation of comic book movies so there's going to be a whole bunch of plethora of crappy ones no it doesn't mean that because peop these big time directors are actually putting careful care into molding these into films that not only comic book fans will enjoy but new fans can enter in on alright I was going to go through each movie but we're not going to do that but we've got to go, go through Infinity War we already mentioned it for those of you that don't know, Infinity War, Thanos comes in, the big bad of Marvel Universe. Six Infinity Stones, you've seen four of them already. Power Stone and Guardians of the Galaxy. Mind Stone is now with Vision. It used to be Loki's scepter. Well, it's been, it's been confirmed in the Marvel Universe that there are two gauntlets. There are two gauntlets, yeah. Uh, Thanos has one. But then the Reality Stone was the Aether in Thor the Dark World. 
Space Stone is the test rack. That's probably the most well-known one because it was the main thing in Avengers. Haven't seen the time of the Soul Stone yet. But uh, you want to talk a little bit about Infinity War? Two parts? They uh, you know what, man? It's just, to me, it's, it looks like it's going to be the whole Marvel Universe getting together, having to ba battle Thanos. Uh, you're going to see way more destruction than the, the, probably the, the first two Avengers movies combined. Uh, you know, it's going to be epic. And uh, are they only a year apart from each other? Yeah, in 18 19, yeah. yeah, so I mean, at least they're filming them together and we, we're not going to have to wait years like we do in between the Avengers movies. Um, what is it? What else is there to say? Like, uh, it's just I'm salivating at the mouth. Maybe who knows even what's going to happen if they pick up these other franchises before then, you know, and insert them in. Let's, you know, all of a sudden possibilities are endless for sure. Yeah, or sudden Reed Richards is in the battle as well. I mean, you never know. You yes. never know. It's, yeah. it's 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 like an infinity of possibilities, and on top of the Infinity Wars, I, my mind's blowing. Yeah. So because of all this Infinity War stuff. Everything after Captain America Civil War, the two teams fighting each other. First of all, let's go through the teams of Captain America Civil War. All right, Captain America, he has a team. Captain America, Bucky, Falcon, Ant-Man, Hawkeye, and Sharon Carter. Have you seen the concept art, I assume? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Keep going. But then Iron Man. You've got Iron Man, War Machine, Black Panther, Black Widow, and Vision. That's a squad right That's there. the team That's right there. That's a squad there. right That's there. That's the team right there. That is. Plus, they got Vision, who has one of the stones inside of him. Yeah. Uh, They're going to have to go easy on Cap's team. Cap, I mean, I know Cap's drawing everything. They got no shot. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, what, who, are they, who are they thinking about? That's yeah. why Captain's going to die. Just Vision himself could pretty much take on the whole team. Captain America's going to die. Yeah. Let's face it. So, yeah, Rest but, in peace. But after Captain America's Civil War, they're going to have to, like you said, they're going to have to combine. Thanos comes in. they got a, a greater force of evil they got to combine against. So, especially if he gets all the Infinity Stones. I feel, I feel he's going to get five of them. They need to come in looking for Vision to get the sixth one. Here's this thought, too. I'm going to throw at you. Thor... What is it? Thor Ragn Ragn no, Ragnarok. Who, who, Bruce Banner making an appearance in that. Hello, it's supposed to be Thor versus Hulk. And then they're going to they're gonna need Thor and Hulk to team up to take on Ragnarok. Take on Thor the whole thing, Hulk. the whole event. We seen, saw a little bit of that in Avengers. But, uh, Unbelievable. We're finally going to answer who's, who'd win in a fight, Thor versus Hulk. Well, Thor's going to win. It's a Thor movie. Yeah, for sure. It's but uh, you already mentioned it, Rob. The big thing we've got to end the show on, Spider-Man. The, yes. the, the face of Marvel <laughs> came out in Tobey Maguire 2002 it did it, I, I love the, the Tobey Maguire trilogy Spider he's never able to well the third one yeah, yeah well it was alright yeah. yeah but uh, I'm being he generous. was never able to come in with the Avengers now 2016 he's making his debut but I can't I, like, I'm speechless right now you can't, I can't even as just, long as we don't get that rehashed you know story yeah, that we get in yeah, all the origin ass. stories like yeah. let's skip on past let's have them already be in existence and then let's get down to the oh, nitty like, gritty let's let's just let's get some more villains yeah. in there let's uh you know let's get to what makes peter parker cool um yeah i mean yeah the cast of villains spider-man has that now could be with other fighting other superheroes yeah. like iron man and everything yeah like guys like scorpion and carnage it gotta see them in the movie yeah, like and the thing for me, Carnage for sure. Maximum Carnage yeah. storyline is the one thing we've yeah. been missing out on. Like they got to do Venom right, and then they have to do a Maximum Carnage yeah. story because that's Venom's vital to that story. So, but for me, we'll Spider Man, he, I know he's the face of Marvel, but for me personally, he's what got me started on Marvel. I saw the Tom McGuire movie two thousand two. Everything since then, all the Marvel video games, cartoons, TV shows, everything is all because of Spider Man. Everything. So now being yeah, everything, all the Avengers, everything. Avengers was the best night of my life when it came out, May 3rd, May 4th, 2012. It's all because of Spider-Man. When the so, credits came, when the opening the best credits day of your came life? Out, pretty much. Wow. They, well, in 14 days, uh, my, the best day of my life is probably going to happen with Star Wars Episode yeah, 7. Yeah. So, yeah. I kinda, but like, even I feel Avengers you. Avengers opening credits came out, the, the, the Marvel crawl of the comic books. I was, I was thinking about Spider-Man, how he got me to that point. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Well, so, yeah, my first few issues of Marvel were, Superman got me into the comics, Death of Superman, but then... Uh, X-Men and Spider-Man I remember I had Spectacular Spider-Man uh, issue 200 where Green Goblin gets killed like those are the two entry points for Marvel for me so yeah um, yeah I feel you man like, and, yeah I was even Spider-Man for uh, Halloween in first grade oh, I remember man. that was a fair costume oh man yeah, was, yeah your parents just, are just trying to hide your face let's face it but, <laughs> no, I mean, why would you hide all this I know right we're I, I know we're twins. Twins. Uh, what remember, am I knocking remember? on you for yeah do it do it do it uh, uh. Uh, 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 it's magic. It's magic. All right, Rob. That's all the time we have for today. 
I know this, this is your last semester, so we had to get the show done. This has been a lot of fun working with you. It's been a it's been a blast, man. And this is actually my official last CTV broadcast. I know I said on commotion that it was, but this is it right here. Yeah. And you got the honor and privilege. And to have. I gotta say, you inspired me, Rob. Have you? I, I've been on the weight loss thing, as you know. I wanted to look like my idol, Rob Sweet. That's how it all started. Oh, I had to look like my idol. Sucks, man. And he's doing a good job. Look at him. You dwindle away anymore. We're not gonna. We're not gonna be able to fit in that Captain America T-shirt. I'm gonna need a, a kid size or something. Yeah, we're gonna have to cut that. But, one. Uh, <laughs> all right, Rob. Thanks for joining us. Anytime you want to do another show after you graduate, I'm all for it. A lot to look forward to, like you said, for Marvel. We'll, 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 we'll be texting each other for Civil War and everything that comes out. Oh yeah. But uh, thanks for joining us today, and uh, we'll see you later. It didn't come down yet, it just it slanted a little bit. Come on, Optimus, I believe in you. Alright, we're good. Oh, I know we went over, but I had to... I, I, I know. I said grandpa and then just like, what's I had to mention a couple things, I, I couldn't... Just make the Marvel 8 minutes and then we'll see. Like, I don't know, man. They would have to plan it really well. A Sonic the Hedgehog. This show is making me wish I was like, I'm scared. You're talking about a Sonic, uh, its own movie? Yeah. Why would I be asking? Uh, I'm talking about Transformers. I didn't what know if you were still on them. I just, I, I went on a tangent. I had to keep going. You should have talked about the Avengers. I'm not, because I know more Avengers. Nobody knew what the hell you were talking about. You'll <laughs> be entertaining.